Hi, I'm Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Gaithersburg and Rockville, and really delighted to host this week's Kibitzing with Kagan, having an informal conversation with the amazing Yvette Lewis, Chair of the Maryland Democratic Party. Now, for the most part, I don't do partisan political stuff. I have been interviewing business leaders, nonprofit folks, community activists, but we are right away, a days away from election day. And so this is the time with our country and our state at stake. This was the time to talk to Yvette. She has been around a long time. She has worked with Stanley Hoyer, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, Chris Van Hollen, and so many influential and important Democrats. She is on her second tour of duty as our state party chair and is a nationally influential Democratic Party chair. So Yvette, welcome and thank you so much for taking the time to talk today. Thanks for having me. Anything for you, absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> so why don't you start by telling our viewers what inspired you to get into politics? How old were you and, and what got you started? Actually, I came late to the table because many don't know I was an opera singer. I had a career on stage uh, before I came to politics, but it was the Bush-Gore race. And I remember uh, when everything was up in the air on election night, people were emotional, people were upset. And I realized that I hadn't done anything but voted. I, had, I didn't even invest anything in that race. So I couldn't even honestly get involved in the emotion because I didn't know what the emotion was about. I was just a voter. And I made the decision that I would never ever let an election season like that pass again without leaving everything on the field. And that was it. That's awesome. I am going to correct one thing you said. You, mm -hmm. said you were just a voter, and I don't want <laughs> just anything. There's no such thing as just a voter, just a little donor, just a volunteer. Those are people who make democracy happen. But certainly, and you know what? And it wasn't until that race that I came to realize that. You're absolutely right, because that's how I saw myself at that point. And when I realized that I could get involved and do so much more, I, and I saw the closeness of the race, mm -hmm. I realized how important votes were, but I absolutely. wanted to do more. That's great. So there are a million public policy issues. I'm wondering what inspired you to become a Democrat or what issues inspire you and make you most passionate today? This is where I feel at home. This is a big tent party. This is a party that welcomes everyone. We go across the spectrum. We are arms open with perspectives and ideologies and values. We welcome everyone. And the other side was closed where a person who looks like me didn't feel like they had a place at the table. That is the one thing about the Democratic Party that I love the most because I know that our party looks like America. Amen to that. This is in a year of Black Lives Matter, of an awareness of diversity, inclusion, and diversity. You've been leading on those issues for a long time at the national level, as well as at the state level. Talk about how you think that's gonna be in play in this year's election. Well, it's fascinating because I grew up in the segregated South and it, uh, uh, issues would bubble up and then they would recede. They would bubble up and they would recede and it always stayed within a select group of people. Because now we have so many different people that are involved in this movement for the first time, I really feel hopeful that we will bring about some real change. We have young people driving this, which is exactly what happened back in the 60s with John Lewis, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Young people were the ones that did it. And it's like history is repeating itself. They brought about fundamental change then. And I think young people are going to bring about fundamental change now. They already are. And so that's what I'm most excited about. That's why I really want to be a part of this movement. That's great. So, so many of us were so inspired by Kamala Harris's addition to the ticket. What impact do you think she's going to have on voters this year? Well, I'll speak as an AKA. I'll there speak as a, as a Howard University graduate, an HBCU graduate. Yeah. And I'll speak as a woman and as an African-American woman. And then I look at her as with her in, uh, AAPI roots as well. She mm -hmm. just encompasses so much. And once again, that goes back to what I said about our party representing America. And I think the fact that so many people, women and girls and, and young men, boys and older men can see the possibilities in her candidacy. And that's why I think it was such a, such an historic pick, but it was a pick that was just 
reek that reeks of genius because she speaks to so many different parts of our of our country and i think that that's the best part so i supported both senator harris and senator booker when the field was enormous at the very beginning of the democratic primary and when when uh, my chief of staff called to tell me that senator harris was vice president biden's pick I was in the middle of Costco and I started shrieking and jumping up and down <laughs> and crying. And I think everybody thought I was nuts, but I think it's going to be transformational. Very exciting to have her there. Um, in the era of COVID, how are we campaigning? What are the extra challenges? What has, um, what has worked and what has been a challenge for you? I'll be honest with you. Um, one of the things that I've been surprised by is how much more we're able to get done. Because really when you think about it, campaigning is all about conversations. Yep. It's about relationships. It's about talking to people. Well, people are, people are at home and we are reaching out that way. Um, and we are finding that we're connecting in ways that possibly we couldn't. We can go to Pennsylvania and we can go to Florida and we can go to North Carolina and we can go to Kentucky and we can go to Texas and we can go to Arizona by picking up the phone. And that's exactly what the state party is doing. We are calling into all of these states Sunday through Sunday. Um, we're having phone banks around the clock. And then we have our targeted states of North Carolina, Florida, Pennsylvania. Those are the main ones. Yep. But we have these days of action because we recognize that we have to flip the Senate as well. And that's where the calls go into Maine and to Arizona and to Colorado and to North Carolina and to South Carolina, where Jamie yes. Harrison is really, really making some noise down there. Yeah. So we're able to get around to all of these states, whereas we would be limited by virtue of the fact of geography, if nothing else, of where we could go to canvas. So I think in many ways we've been able to expand our reach. Fantastic. What is What are the best and worst parts of being chair of the Maryland Democratic Party? The best parts of being chair are the people. I love, I'm a people person and I enjoy the connection with people. Um, last night I did uh, the St. Mary Central County uh, Central Committee. I did Wacomico, I did Frederick, you know, and I'm enjoying connecting with people. That is so important to me. And I think people need to feel that connection with the party. The worst parts, I'm not really sure I would call it the worst parts, but I don't feel like I have enough hours in the day to do everything that I want to do all over the state in the way that I want to do it. So that would be the biggest drawback time. I don't have the time that I'd like to have because I, I'm, I'm like, want to be the last person in the room talking to everybody. And I, and I can't always do that because I have to get to the next event so that I can spend time with more people. So that would be the, the, the biggest drawback for me. Yep, that makes sense. Um, can you tell us please, um, a lot of people say in Maryland, my vote doesn't matter. Um, my favorite button, and I'm gonna hold it close up to the screen. I don't know if people are gonna be able to read it. Vote or you have nobody to blame but yourself. Uh, why should someone vote in Maryland? Why does it matter? You know, it's interesting because I think sometimes we think that we're a blue state, mm, doesn't matter. Well, we thought that in 2014, didn't we? Right. And we, we were still a blue state, but we turned our governor's mansion over to you know what, and uh, we did it again in 2018. So yep. that's why your vote matters. But the other thing is, what I want to do at, during this term as chair is something that I don't think we do enough of. We are so top down in terms of how we talk about voting. We are going to change that and start to talk about bottom up. That means we're going to make, pe make sure that people understand what every single seat means to them personally mm -hmm. and why it's important for you to get involved and vote in every single election because there's always an election somewhere and that mm -hmm. election that you decide to sit out could be the very election that decides something about your property taxes or something about your schools or something about your roads so this is the kind of thing that we are going to spend our time educating voters about it's not just about this fancy fun sexy presidential election right it's about all elections because all elections matter. So thank you for that. And all elections matter. You and I were just talking about how 48 state legislative districts around the entire country, 48 states, if they go from Republican to Democrat, will switch 10 chambers, House or Senate in all these different states, which matters on health care, the environment, civil rights and civil liberties, every possible issue. Absolutely. Every vote counts. 
and, uh, and ballot measures. We've got two constitutional amendments. We have county charter uh, amendments and questions as well as judges and school board and everything else this year, so. And that impacts you directly, you know? Okay. You open your door, what happens outside on your porch sometimes okay. is impacted by those elections, which is why we cannot be passive consumers of our democracy. We can't pick up the phone and call someone and say, hey, who should I vote for on this ballot? Absolutely not. We have to be invested in our political future and do the research and get to know our elected officials. Like you said, we don't have anyone to blame but ourselves. That's right, that's right. Uh, having said that though, I do have recommendations on the ballot measures and they're on my website, CherylKagan.org. The parties have taken positions, I've taken positions. And so sometimes when folks are busy and they're tempted to just not vote on ballot measures because they're confusing, looking to others, looking to see what the Washington Post, the Baltimore Sun has endorsed, that's, that is worth looking at, so. But guess what, guess what? It's because people voted for you and knew enough about you to invest their trust in you that you could make that recommendation. If you mm -hmm. weren't there, you could not make that recommendation. That's why it's important to know who we're putting in office. That's exactly my point. That's true, thank you, appreciate that. So I have one more question before we go to our fast five. You are an extraordinary leader, and I'm wondering who have been some of your mentors who have helped you get to where you are in politics or in life, and then how you think about mentoring others, young women and men, as they're on their way up. You know, I get asked this question all of the time. And no, I thought it was gonna be unique, darn it. No, well, let me tell you, <laughs> but the thing is my, my, my answer is, my, it's a conglomeration. Uh -huh. It's not a personality, it's that mother who has four children, who's a single mom, who works every single day and all of her kids go to college, like my grandmother, right? It's my grandfather who was the first African-American to start his own business uh, in the state of North Carolina, one of the first, it was an insurance business. I have two grandparents on my mother's side that are college educated, which is unheard of in that day and time. It's that third grade teacher that saw something special that said she needs to be in this particular class, let's take her out because there's, she's not getting enough here, let's put her there. So it's a conglomeration of people. It's that methods teacher at Howard University who taught me how to be a good music educator because I needed to be a music educator so that I could work while I was trying to learn how to be a singer. You know, it's that first principle who took me under his wing because he felt that I was an extraordinary teacher, as he used to say, but I needed that extra nurturing. And he taught me how to be a good educator. It's that vocal coach. I mean, so it's a conglomeration of people that have been a part of my life, whose lessons I take with me everywhere I go. And with each new person that I meet, I try to gain something from that and add it into this mosaic of what I've decided my life is going to look like. And really that's how I operate. Remarkable, thank you. Uh, it's the second time you've mentioned Howard University. So I should mention that my mother went to dental hygiene school at Howard. She really, nice. She did. nice. That was a few years ago. <laughs> so Yvette Lewis, I have fast five questions. Okay. Some of these are gonna be hard, some are gonna be easy. Uh, three political leaders you most admire, living or dead? Um, Barack Obama, Frederick Douglass, and Shirley Chisholm. Love Shirley Chisholm. Yeah. Number two, uh, if you could pick anyone, and I'm going to take Joe Biden off the list, anyone living or dead who you wish could be president of the United States, who would it be? Oh, that's hard. Um, Barbara Jordan. That's, she's awesome. Barbara Jordan. I like it. Uh, once it's safe for us to travel anywhere in the world, where would you want to go? Around Maryland, because I miss my state. I miss my state. I, I miss getting out. I miss going to the Eastern Shore. I miss going to, to Western Maryland. I miss my state. I really nice. do. That's nice. what I want to do. That's fantastic. What makes you laugh the most? We're all under so much stress and we could use an opportunity to just let loose and enjoy. What What's that for you? Living with a husband who has the best sense of humor on earth. He's my best friend and he still makes me laugh. He still knows the things to do to uplift me. I think everyone on in life should have that one person 
He's my person. Everyone should have that person that does that for you. Um, because when things get really, really dark, as they have been these last few months, the ability to last laugh. Last few years? Is that what you said? The last months. few years? Well, yeah, years, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, they said, know, just clarifying. <laughs> just just clarify. It it really does, it really does help. And then um, I have uh, great kids who have their father's sense of humor, so that helps. Perfect. That's great. Last question. Want to know what your secret hidden talent is, your superpower that most folks don't have? Cook. I can cook. Nice. I can bake. I can bake. I mean, I bake like bread from scratch, homemade rolls from scratch. So it's, it's a Southern thing. I'm a, I'm a great Southern cook, which I can't do all the time because I can't eat like that. But when I do, I, I'm a Southern cook from North Carolina who learned at my grandmother's knee. I make cakes from scratch with like two sticks of butter and six eggs. Oh so my. I don't know. So that's a hidden talent. It really is. All right. So after I go to the gym ferociously, <laughs> I put my mask and invite myself over to partake. And that was absolutely. It. <laughs> and you never leave my house hungry. Never. There you go. And it's almost a Jewish mother thing then. Yes. Um, Yvette, how can people get involved with the Maryland Democratic Party? How can they donate? How can they follow along on social media? If you could lay out some of that for us before we wrap. I'm so glad you asked. Go to our website, mddems.org slash volunteer. First of all, you can sign up to volunteer. Volunteer for these wonderful phone banks that we are running every single day. We need you to do that. We need you to donate to our Blue Circle program, which is a low dollar $1, $2, $3, recurring. But that's the life's blood of the party. That's what we use to pay for these regional organizers that we're putting all over the state to help out with the work that we're, that we're trying to do. You can donate to our Blue Circle program. We have 100, follow us on social media, um, uh, MD Dems, uh, follow us on Twitter, follow, our, follow us on Instagram. But the other thing is we're doing a number of programs that uh, we have on Facebook Live join us. We've had Black Lives Matter panels on social media that we've been doing very well with when we did our convention. That was on social media. We do our state meetings on social media. Follow us on our Facebook Live pages so that you can see exactly what your state party is doing. But all of that is on our website. Join us, join us, join us. The Maryland Democratic Party, we are back. We are strong. And one of the things that's very important for all of us is yes, we're excited about what's happening with the presidential. 2022 is around the corner. That's that's our baby. Mm -hmm. And all of these states that we're calling and we're helping, they know that we expect reciprocity and they have already agreed their volunteers will be helping us because we are going to win back the governor's mansion and we're going to expand our majorities in both houses. So that's what we need. Fantastic. Well, Yvette Lewis, Chair of the Maryland Democratic Party, thank you for what you do every day. Thank you for your commitment to progressive and inclusive politics. And thank you for joining us for a kibitz today. I look forward to seeing you in person, hopefully at big victory parties in the very near future. Thank you for having me. This is great. Thank you. Everyone take care. Thanks for watching. Hey!